All right, so uh, today, guys, I'm going to be going over my add-on that I made for uh, destructible bodies. So, um, in a couple of video games, I, I think this was most prevalent in Crisis One, if I recall. Uh, but you're able to destroy certain objects. Um, now, this add-on will not do that. It won't be able to dynamically say like destroy a tree and then like the tree falls over and stuff like that. Now, this is more for uh, specifically like concrete breaking apart um, or you know any sort of chunky looking uh, like rock uh, breaking stuff apart not not necessarily full-scale destruction but like you know just a little bit um, so this is ideal for pretty low poly games uh, since it can get taxing uh, if you apply it to something with lots and lots of detail lots of polys uh, it will not work. All right, so you're, you're gonna get really bad performance if you do that. But uh, if you're going for you know kind of low poly or you're having destruction only on the lowest poly objects, like you're pretty much golden. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this does here. Uh, here we go. Uh, and so I'm able to walk around, and you see I had that cube fall, and then it hit that, and it was it was. That is a velocity-based destruct destruction, and so you're able to actually trigger um, a break-off chunk like this uh, with velocity. And then in this demo, uh, in in my uh, my GitHub, I will link that below. Um, you can also just click to kind of remove a chunk. Um, you can also configure the size of the chunk that you uh, remove. And so you can see, um, I think the meme was that this looks like cake. So um, so yeah. You see that we break apart the cake. Now this is not perfect. You see there's these little itty bits that are stuck around. These are just going to be artifacts that you might be able to mitigate, but it's going to be pretty difficult. And yeah, there's another one right there. Um, so I'd recommend, like I said, try to go, uh, if, if you're going to use this, make sure you use it in a relatively low poly art style where inconsistencies like that won't really make a difference. Also, the collision is updated. So I'm able to like stand where the part is chunk uh, has been broken off, and yeah, here's here's this again. I'm able to actually stand with my uh, my player capsule here, uh, and in those uh, little dents, you can do it for all these objects here. Like this one has a bigger chunk that breaks out, and then afterward it actually reverts to a uh, rigid body um, of the original object. So that would be ideal for something that. Um, you want to be able to move after you've broken it up and you can see all these chunks you know they they have full collision and everything and so you could have some pretty interesting game mechanics and yeah here's like you know really big chunks here yeah very very fun you know you can get stuck in there and then in this case I also have a limiting amount of chunks that you can break off because the more chunks you do the worse your performance will be and this is just a matter of the fact that CSG was not designed to run in real time. It was designed to run it in the editor and then like, you know, be fully ready to go by the time you uh, hit the play button in Godot. So um, it's not ideal for really large scale things that, you know, have lots and lots of bits breaking off. So if you limit the number of bits, the number of chunks that break out, uh, you should be good to go. And plus, you know, once something looks destroyed enough, it, it, it's passable if you keep on shooting it and it doesn't really react to anything anymore at some point. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a compromise for you. All right. And then, let's see. Uh, in some cases, you can choose to not actually have a chunk piece come out, um, and that will save on performance. Uh, you can just have just breaking away. All right. Uh, I'll show you actually the... Uh, the collision shapes really quick to just show you that yes this add-on does actually modify the collision shape fully and so that's why you know it looks it can look pretty good you can also adjust the launch speed you know how much the piece launches out from where it was at and that the mass of the uh, the mass density will affect that as well and so it's all you know pretty physically accurate so and yeah, see, this is a this is a rigid body now. But as you can see, the indents are not actually concave because rigid bodies that are uh, concave are are not supported. They have to be convex shapes. And so, if you have your your object designed to uh, uh, become a rigid body and you know kind of 
get new physics after it's been kind of fully destroyed. Um, that's what will happen. And so now let's actually look at this. So this is, uh, if you actually want to add it, you know, you can look it up. Uh, I can't remember which one. I, I think it's just the, the one without the .gd. Um, and that will give you the correct destructible body. But it's, you can see, as you can see, it's a subcategory of rigid body. Um, so it extends from that. And here we go. Over here, you should be able to assign the, uh, the base mesh. And that's pretty straightforward. I tried to get everything running as smoothly as possible in the editor, but it, it frankly is, is not the greatest experience. For example, it doesn't have bounding boxes, and so you can't actually select your destructible bodies uh, in the editor. I haven't figured that out in Godot. If you know exactly what to do, please feel free to contribute to my uh, my, my GitLab branch, uh, and then you'll be fully credited in the uh, README. But yeah, absolutely. If you, if you know something I don't, please help me out. Um, because uh, yeah, this, this is the first add-on I've ever made in Godot. Uh, uh, so yeah, we're able to choose our base mesh. Uh, for example, we could do new cube mesh, and you see that updates live in the editor. We have the base material, and then we have the underlying material. So you can think of the base material as, say, if we had a big building, you want your base material to be that all those window panes and maybe the uh, the roof, um, and that could be UV laid out. Uh, in in this case, yeah, these are all UV uh, aligned. Uh, textures and then actually my underlying material I made that in particular be um, uh, I, I made that uh, in this case I made it uh, UV based you could make it world tri triplanar based but be aware that if your chunk moves like the world triplanar will be kind of uh, it'll cause weird warping on the textures and so usually want you want to have UV um, and also I'll show you why it, it's able to stay con so consistent um, so in our chunk mesh here, I just have a really, really simple um, UV sphere here. And we have radial segments is five and rings is two. You can increase that uh, per object. Say if you have a highly detailed object, I remember I, I would recommend having uh, lower detailed chunks. And if you have a low detail object, you could have a little bit higher detail chunks on the mesh. But the chunk mesh, you generally want that to be low detail. And then also you want it to be relatively round so that you don't end up with weird artifacts um, you know those little bits and pieces hanging out uh, from before uh, those will be exacerbated exacerbated if you have uh, even more weird shaped chunks uh, but these are going to basically be the spawn shape that the the CSG logic uses to um, you know get out of that uh, all right and then so you can change that to whatever you want potentially uh, if you just don't like, you know, having a UV sphere there, uh, and then chunk damping that will basically make it uh, so that you know your 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 chunk might not immediately break away from the from the thing. Same thing with chunk explosiveness. So that this, the chunk damping is more of the rigid body um, relevant issue, where you know you have the the angular and 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 uh, uh, translational damping on rigid bodies. Uh, that's what that. Yeah, you know, each breakaway chunk will have that applied to it. Uh, your chunk explosiveness, once again, it's going to uh, that's going to determine how much it you know that your chunk gets sent out um, af after it's been made. Uh, your chunk scale adjustment, uh, in this case, you'll want it to be about 0 0.8. If it's one, your chunk could just kind of stay in the slot and just vibrate uh, continuously because it's like a perfect fit for where it was. So I recommend doing a 0.8 scale factor. Um, and that will make sure that there's no collision problems. And then, and then it, on top of that, kind of looks like there's material broken away. Um, your chunk density, um, that's kind of just determining how much each piece is going to weigh. So you could have, like, you know, you, if your material is really dense, it could mean that, you know, your, your chunk density is going to, you know, your chunks might uh, uh, not be affected by other physics, you know, because it's so heavy, right? Uh, your chunk lifetime. If this is, uh, I believe, zero, it will. Yeah, or okay. You see, if your chunk lifetime is negative one, your chunk will never disappear. But if it's two, that means after two seconds, your chunk is going to disappear, and that way you can, you know, free up resources. So that's a uh, that's a pretty convenient thing for you. Um, and then here's the debris instance. So I just made mine just a little um, uh, quad particle, and then I have like a, a particle material, and so that means that it will like spawn just some 
you know, random debris at the at the point of uh, contact, and that way it looks more like you know stuff is breaking apart with you know, or smaller stuff is breaking apart with the overall general chunk that's being taken out, and so that'd be good for like you know, if you had like a chunk of a building you know taken out, you could have like a, a little bit of glass or um, you know uh, some other uh, structural fragments that kind of fly out, um, and then. Use inertia. This this toggle will basically make it so that um, if you have any sort of uh, rigid body that's coming at your object with high speed, it's going to it, it, at a certain point uh, with the inertial with the uh, inertia tolerance. Um, that means that you will have a chunk generated, uh, as opposed to like the click you know remove the chunk. In this case, I had the demo show where this cube falls onto the cake, the piece of cake over here, and that spawns a chunk. Uh, because of the, uh, let me uh, select that. I know I, I hate that I can't have it. Uh, okay, there's the cake. Uh, can't, that can't have it selectable in the in the view because I can't figure out the bounding boxes issue. Um, and yeah, so we get the, uh, yeah, we get the cake right here. Uh, and it's yeah, use inertia and its inertial tolerance is 1,000, and so it's gonna break apart when the mass of something that hits it times the velocity is 1000 or more all right so that's kind of uh that's kind of the theory behind that um and you can change the contacts reported and that will make sure that you're not kind of uh um uh that 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 sort of thing can make it so that you you sometimes won't detect some collisions and so you want might want to make sure that's about five or six um definitely greater than two um, if you only have two contacts, you could just have something that's touching two things, and then it won't ever detect anything else again. So, um, so you want to keep that pretty high. Uh, your particle's lifetime, in this case, you know, that'd be your debris. Um, uh, and yeah, this this part right here has debris, and so my particle's lifetime for that is uh, one second. So it's going to show the debris for one second, and then it's going to kill it off. Um, and then here's the max destruction pieces, and so for this object, I have three. Um, it can be, I would say, no more than 10 uh, for simple sh shapes. Uh, just CSG gets slow after a while. Um, and then set rigid on set rigid on max destruction. So if you notice in the actual rigid body component of this, it's set to static. I'd recommend keeping it static. Doing anything else will make it behave strangely. So keep it on static. And then um, once it's done being destroyed with all the chunks, it's going to set it to rigid if that's enabled. And that's pretty much the walkthrough through my plugin. Um, I can actually show you, uh, you know, if you're not interested in the actual script, feel free to leave. Uh, but you know, feel free to leave a comment if you have a question about how this works. Once again, the uh, uh, the uh, GitHub is available in the uh, description, so feel free to check it out. You can check out the source code for yourself. But I'll just walk through this. Um, so upon entering the tree, uh, this is more of the uh, editor side of things. But uh, I'll actually show you the Where's the good? Oh yeah, here we go. All right, so there's this function called destruct, and so uh, this is called when uh, inertia is like this, or it can be called from say your player character with a ray cast, you know, uh, going to a point, and then you can call destruct on the uh, object. And so uh, you can see I actually have a call deferred here, and that's because yeah. You, we uh, with CSG, it does not like playing on the main loop. All right, Godot hates it. All right, so I had to basically jerry rig this thing to uh, uh, to fit in the uh, deferred, uh, you know, whatever the deferred method it can be. And so that's going to basically call it on a separate th separate thread, not the main physics thread or the main whatever thread. Um, and so I emit a signal, uh, so you can connect that to something if you really need it. Um, and, uh, all right, so I, you know, go through all the logic. So we basically take out the chunk, uh, with the, we mask it out first. So we create a new CSG mesh and go through this. And, uh, then we, uh, remove the mask from the base mesh. And so that will basically eat, eat off the uh, original mesh. And then we'll, uh, optionally call the uh, spawn chunk and uh, when we spawn the chunk uh, it's going to basically do 
So with the previous one, it basically calculates what it's going to eat away from the original object. And then when we spawn the chunk, we calculate what we want to keep based off of our, our chunk mass, all right, from the original object. And so basically, uh, if you have a sphere eating, eating halfway through, um, you know, your, your, uh, your original base object, we just mask it out so that this part is all taken away from the base object, but then the rest of the object is taken away from the chunk, all right? So that's kind of, you know, we, we do the, the same CHD operation, but uh, one is a union versus the other is an intersection. Um, and yeah, and then we make sure we generate all the collision shapes um, appropriately. We had to, uh, in this case, I had to get the convex shape from the CSG. Um, and with the CSG, there is a, uh, yeah, so there's also get concave shape um, from the CSG, and so that way we can have a concave shape for the base, but we have to use a convex for anything that becomes a new uh, standard rigid body coming out of it. Um, yeah, and so here's the my, my functions to get the concave shape or get convex shape. Um, it's just wonky math, so don't worry about that. But yeah, you, you should be able to... Uh, this is hopefully somewhat readable. It is comp complicated because it has to be uh, deferred and multi-threaded sort of so um, but this is generally uh, or this uh, probably has room for optimization so uh, if you are actually really interested in this feel free to contribute to the github I, I'm, I'm serious about that um, because uh, obviously this is all written in GD script and it's probably not ideal It'd probably be better in uh, C++ or uh, GD native um, so feel free to contribute to that but if there's any uh, other questions, feel free to comment on this video. I hope this was uh, informational for you, uh, for those that suck around uh, to look at the code. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can use this in your game. I, I would love to uh, get a tag if you're already using this and you know just haven't credited it, it yet. You know, feel feel free to. I, I'd love to see your work. You know, uh, and I'll give you a shout out. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.